they're lucky enough for John Denner to come into our school to talk to him. We also asked him about his views of the diversity in Southampton and if he played any part towards it. I suppose I wanted to change the world, but in more practical terms, to have a society that was fairer, that had more opportunity for more people, where people could achieve what they wanted to, whatever background they came from, and also to um, have a society that people felt was fair. I suppose what I really believe is that we all do better for ourselves and our families if we look out for each other. If we're a very selfish society, some people do well, some people won't. So it's, there's more security and more prosperity if we all look out for each other. Well, I think you have, to, you have to understand that the, the, the decisions you take will probably uh, have a real effect on somebody's real life. And I think trying to bring that back into, into it and think, well, what will this look like when it's actually put into practice out there? Whether you're changing a law or if, as I've been a government minister, you're taking a decision about how a public service should be run, you think, this is going to have a real-world effect on someone somewhere. And I think sometimes... Westminster and government can seem very remote from ordinary people's lives and from individuals' lives, and it's easy not to be thinking about how is this going to affect somebody. Well, if I go back to the reasons why I said that I was in the Labour Party, I have this fundamental belief that as a society, as families, as individuals, we do better in a society where we look out for each other. Uh, we don't just grab what we can for ourselves, but we care about what's happening to other people. A strong community is the foundation for that. If we live in a place that people are happy to live in, where they've got good neighbours, they've got friends, where people think people I don't know still want to be part of the same society as me, then we will all be more successful and we'll be more secure, we'll be healthier, we'll do better in our schooling, whatever you want to look at. So huge practical benefits come from the idea of a strong community. If we're a divided community, then people are suspicious of each other. People don't want to pay into taxes because they think the wrong people are going to benefit from the taxes they pay. Practical terms, people uh, are competing with other people. People are always looking over their shoulders and saying, is that group doing better than my group is doing? And that's very destructive. So a strong community makes us all stronger. Well, I think the main thing is, is, is exposure to different people. I mean, you know, my, my children came through Southampton schools, my grown-up children, they went through Beavis Town School, they both came to Cantel, so they've always been in diverse schools. And to be honest, if you go through a diverse school, then uh, you're the first point. So I'm very much in favour of making sure in all aspects of children's lives there is diversity. So people make friendships quite naturally, because children do, across different race, dis races, different faiths, and all the rest of it. And where you have schools where that doesn't happen, I think it's very, the responsibility is not is for schools not to say, well, it's not a big issue around here, but it's actually to make sure that children have that experience of different ways of life. And there's, there's sort of two parts of this. The most important thing is getting to know people, talking to people, saying, what do you believe? What do I believe? What do we have in common? Uh, sometimes, perhaps too much detail people, but if I put this one, in making sure that everybody knows you know, all the key elements of seven other different faiths. Well, that's sort of useful information, but if you've never actually met anybody from another faith, you've never had a friendship with them, you've never worked on a school project with them, well, I'm not quite sure what you're going to do with that information. So I think we, we, we need to focus on the relationships there are between children, um, and not just what they know about people who might come from a different background. The second thing, the other thing that's really important, and it's difficult for schools, but there are big issues going on in the world today, issues around terrorism, there's conflicts in different parts of the world. And that can get very mixed up with people's sense of what, what particular faiths are, what people from different backgrounds believe, what people from this group has done in another part of the world. It's very important that schools provide a safe space where children from different backgrounds can talk about those contemporary issues. And the reason I say that is that if Young people want to know about these things. If you can't talk about it at school where it's safe, you'll go on the internet. You'll look up all sorts of other sources of information, which may be wrong, may be dangerous, may be malicious. And so uh, there's a real challenge in a, in a difficult world like we've got at the moment for schools to provide a space for people to talk about those things. I've understood that you were stepping down as an MP. Can I ask you why you made this decision and what it involved? I was a councillor before that, so that's 20, 34 years of some sort of elected role. And I think any, anybody gets to the point in their life where... where if you decide to carry on doing something, you're deciding not to do other things. And I thought, you know, if I do another five years, a, I might run out of steam and not enjoy the job as much as I want to do. If, if things like this interview become doing a chore, 
rather than something you enjoy, you should probably be in a different job. So I wanted to get out while I still enjoyed it. Uh, and, and that's essentially, that's essentially the, 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 the reason. And um, you know, it's been a huge privilege. Um, I've been in this city since I was 18. Um, I was lucky enough to be elected as an MP for the city that I've lived in all my adult life. And uh, it, you know, it's been a great experience.